Shalom, Chavri, my name is Stephen Vernon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I guess we're getting a little bit creative here in try how to try to do the intro because I am definitely not the smartest guy on the planet Earth when it comes to these intro things. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I wanted to share with you guys before I get started with this broadcast here. This is a picture our daughter drew. Uh, she is dyslexic, has a severe form of dyslexia, but uh, she keeps, keeps hearing about people saying, well, we don't love the USA. Well, this child, and of course we do as well, do love the United States. The only thing is we kind of hate the proxies that have taken over our country, the cabal, I guess I should say, that has hijacked our country uh, and really caused us a lot of despair in the world today. Uh, let's get right into what's going on, friends, here. What's really concerning me, of course, Russia is already saying that Israel is the one that actually struck the air base. Uh, we've been in contact with several of our friends there inside of Syria, one of them being a journalist, another uh, a citizen that lives there near homes, uh, Syria, uh, and of course, uh, one other person as well, trying to get an idea of what's going on. And one thing that really caught my attention was one of our friends there that lives not far from homes sent me a message saying that uh, when I asked him about what's going on on the ground in Syria, he actually said, well, it was a pretext for ISIS to attack the air base and specifically for ISIS to attack the Syrian forces. Well, I did a little bit of digging. And the next thing I discover is that ISIS had advanced knowledge of the Israeli airstrike and took advantage of that to actually strike uh, the Syrian forces stationed near the air base there inside of homes. And also a journalist friend of mine that is actually in Syria, and that's Vanessa Bealey, said that Israel had struck yet again. And that was just a few hours ago that Vanessa actually wrote me that comment there that Israel had struck again. Now, we're not seeing that on news. I haven't seen anything on social media as of yet. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Vanessa is in Damascus right now. Uh, I know she is in Syria. I did not ask at the time where she was at. She just said they had struck again. And uh, whether Vanessa was speaking about it was the second time since the last attack back, I think it was in January, or whether or not Israel had struck again later this morning after last night's uh, air raid on uh, the uh, T-4 air base there in Homs, I'm not really sure. But my big question is, is this whole issue about ISIS. This reminds me of when uh, the Allied coalition were striking the Syrian Arab army over near Dezord, what was it, a little over a year ago now. And in the process of that, 80 people were killed. That, was, that actually included Russian soldiers as well, never made mainstream media, but Russian soldiers were killed in that attack, as well as I think it was 69 Syrian soldiers. The Russian ministry was saying to the US, you're attacking the wrong target. The US said they were actually attacking ISIS. But in retrospect of all this, it was actually ISIS was doing the launching the attack against the Syrian government while the U.S. and NATO allies were launching the attack on the Syrian government. So much easier to say afterwards, oops, sorry, isn't it? But in the case of this one here, we're finding out that Israel, as they struck the air base there, also ISIS had advanced knowledge and struck the Syrian army around that air base. Now, I mentioned earlier, maybe Israel is doing this attack on the Iranian forces at the air base there because Israel is concerned about what the U.S. will do against Damascus. But there's another side to this story as well. Israel was very upset when they heard President Trump discussing that he was going to leave the region, especially in light of the Iranians. It could also be that Israel is trying to drag the U.S. into a deeper and broader war in order to take out Iran while they're going after the Syrian government for the alleged chemical attack, saying that the Syrian government carried this attack out. And as I stated before earlier, and I say it again, how in the world do the White Helmets survive every one of these chemical attacks and are able to be there on the spot to video all, all of this? It's troubling, friends. 
very troubling. I mean, if people can't see a deep state at work here, I, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. It's very troubling. I do believe that we're going to see an attack coming against uh, the Syrian government. I know they're meeting today in this emergency meeting. We're going to see nothing but a wave of propaganda that the evidence is overwhelming against Bashar al-Assad and Russia. They're going to say that Russia should be held accountable. Britain, has, of course, has kind of been laid back in this situation here. But believe me, the whole Skripal case, I think, was also uh, done as more evidence that would get the British government, not only the Brit not so much the British government, but get the British citizens behind a war in Syria. And is it possible that this is exactly what the Skripal case was from the beginning? Was it a plan to actually get the public in UK behind a NATO-led or US-led strike on Syria, knowing that they were going to do a chemical attack, blame it on Assad, and all you have to do, have an attack like this in, in, in uh, Britain to be able to say, oh, the Russians did it here. Now they're over there doing it in Syria. We finally have to act and we're going to have to help our U.S. partners in this attack against the Syrian government. Well, as General Wesley Clark said, they're going to take down all these nations in that time frame, which they never kept to the time frame, but they are definitely, they're taking down the nations now. I'm Stephen Benoon. Hate to be the bearer of bad news once again. Uh, a lot of people are saying it looks like war is on. Uh, it, it may very well be on, and I'm very concerned about that. We'll have to see how they're planning on doing this attack. Will they strike? Will they strike Damascus? Or will, uh, well, let me put it this way. If the U.S., if NATO and their allies decide to pay uh, Syria for a crime they did not commit, and using these chemical weapons against uh, the civilians. Uh, the question is, is will they uh, strike Damascus or will they actually strike targets outside of Damascus? I believe if you see Syrian forces struck, but they're not in Damascus or it's not a, a heavy, heavy bombardment, then we will probably avert a war, an all out world war at this time. But if Damascus is struck and Russia keeps to its promise to defend, the Syrian uh, military against a U.S.-led attack, then it'll be a, no doubt, drug into a world war. Also, if you can, share with me. I've been hearing, got a, got a tweet last, excuse me, a text last night that the Russian <clears throat> government had moved a, thousands of soldiers over to the Ukrainian border. Uh, I have not been able to independently confirm that there. I am trying to find out. Let me just see real quick. Uh, if, the, if, if I actually had gotten any more information on that since that, since my request for that other information there, um, I, I'm not seeing as of right now. Maybe, maybe I did get a response to that. I'll come back to you guys. We'll look, look at that later this evening. And uh, we're going to pre-announce the program tonight uh, or the, later this evening. I'll try to pre-announce it. It'll also be on live stream. Those that watch I know we don't need to look at all the editing programs here, but anyway, blessings to all of you. Shalom.